locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling. I am the Duke, and I'm joined here by my sometimes grumpy, sometimes illustrious co-host. How dare you? The Boston Bad Boy. I'm Mike Pelosi. <sighs> so you took a little vacation last week there, huh, champ? Yeah, you got that right. Huh. You got that right, Jack. Must be nice. Yeah, it was very nice. Wow. Oh, did you know I found out that there's a person who I work with in my, my real professional life? Mm. It's five weeks of vacation a five year. Five weeks? Five weeks. Whoa. Doing something which is similar to what I do. Mm. I don't get five weeks. Hmm. What kind of deal is that? Oh, that's because you're small time. You yeah. See that? That's what happens. You know what it is? It's because I'm indispensable. Oh, they that... couldn't afford <laughs> to run the company without wow. me being there. If Imagine I was if that. I was gone for a month a year, yeah. get it? Chaos. Wow. Chaos. It's like this show. When yeah. I'm not here, it stumbles, and if I wasn't here, gone. Is that, is that wiped what you off think? the face is of the earth? Is that what you think? Absolutely. Listen, you know, we we were number one story in. Um, in wrestling, especially the number one non WWE pay per view related story, mm. our interview with Jazz. Really, everyone wanted to talk about. Well, her. you're welcome. I'm really glad I could help you oh, and Jazz break. get to number one. Everyone wanted to talk about Jazz, saying she didn't give a damn about the WWE uh, All Women's Pay Per View Evolution. Yeah, well, she's right. Hey, hey, and we're gonna keep that momentum going because uh, Jazz's husband, the Red Dog Rodney Mack, he's mm-hmm. gonna join us a little later. I'm afraid of him. He will hurt you. Yeah. Just so you know. He's, uh, he's a big dude. You can talk to Irvin Legend about uh, what happens oh, when you geez. mouth off to Rodney Mack. <laughs> Folks, I, we posted a couple years ago. I'm going to repost That's that. Right. When yeah. Rodney Mack just beat the stuffing out of, out of yeah. Irvin Legend. Uh, he learned the hard way what happens when you mess with the Red Dog. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like he one of those guys that would hit you and not realize the strength. Sure. And then just killed you. Yep. You and, know, and, like, then, oh. and then explain to you afterwards. He probably oh. pick you up, dust you off, and say, now look, you disrespected me. Yeah. I had to do that to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why'd He's you make why'd guys. you make me hit Why'd you make me <laughs> break your face? Right? Exactly. I didn't have, we could have had a conversation. Yeah, exactly. Because you know he's a very nice guy. Yeah. But it's scary because he'll hurt you. So oh. that'll that'll be a fun conversation. <laughs> but you know, before we get to any of that stuff there, yeah. Boston Bad Boy. WWE Hall of Famer Donald Trump. Oh, Jesus. The elected president of the United <laughs> Every States. Every time you say Hall of Famer, I automatically get nauseous, and then when you throw that behind it. Well, um, we had the midterm elections uh, this week, yep. and, and, yeah. and <laughs> Trump cut a scathing heel promo. Boy, did he. The next day. Boy, huh? did he. Did what, you... what was that with the, with the media? You know, it's funny, because on one hand, hmm. I'm happy the media actually grew up set and decided to stand up to this. They, they've slowly been doing it. Sure. They've slowly been ramping it up. Sure. Uh, and it's funny that we, at least to me, because I'm such a news junkie, like I start to recognize faces in the press pool. Yep, yep. And uh, is April Ryan. She's mm-hmm. uh, with CNN. Jim and, and Jim Acosta. Yep, yep. Who should get the Edward R. Murrow Award. That guy standing, and the way they had it shot, if anybody saw this press conference, where they tried to pull the microphone out of Jim Acosta's <laughs> hand mid-question. Didn't they pull his arm? They, well, she grabbed his arm, which yeah. to me is assault. But, yeah. you know, um, yep. the, the way it, he's standing... As close as you and I are sitting, a mm-hmm. couple of feet apart from the president of the United States, and he's just, he's going, and like, yeah, like, good for him. Yeah. That made me feel good. Whether or not, and, and Trump's telling him to sit down like he's a, a with petulant. With his finger out. With his finger out, pointing with mm-hmm. those ghostly white eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And- it's disgusting. And the best thing that Trump could say is, you're fake news. It's like, all right, yeah, okay, whatever. We know that that's your go-to campaign insanity. And I thought, as Trump wandered away from the podium, that he was actually going to throw him out of there. And I was actually hoping it was going to happen. Because maybe that would wake people up to the assault on the First Amendment that is going on by this administration. Absolutely. Absolutely. Throwing the press out of a press event. It's 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 disgusting. My only my only other thought was the best thing they could have done after that happened, the press corps should have stood up and walked out on him. Yep. Left him standing there. Yep. Like a like the douche that he is. Mm-hmm. And now he, he just got rid of the attorney general. He, yes, he did. He did. So he, he continues to live up to his, Grandma his Clampett. moniker as the biggest heel in the world. Uh, even right? bigger than that, uh, you may not be an American citizen anymore. That's right. That's right. So, if, if you have any parents that were born outside of this country, yeah. 
uh, folks. Uh, according to Trump, you're you you should be shipped away. Yeah, basically. I mean, I'm a, I think yeah. I'm a third generation, oh, so I, I made you, the you cut. Made the cut. I made the you cut. Made the cut. You, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I think I think we, you're an out. anchor, baby. Yeah, that's when, what happens. If it comes down this to is it, what happens? You know? So if it comes down to it, I gotta. Well, I, I'll have to leave with all of Trump's kids. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you, I don't think you want to go where they're going. No, I don't want to be anywhere <laughs> near them. Does yeah. that mean if they're not if they're not citizens yep. when they do get in prison, do they have to go to Guantanamo? That's a good question. And when they're there, like good Republicans would would want, are they waterboarded? Mm. There's a lot of questions here. See, somebody needs to answer these. Questions. I think I think we should we should leap into figuring out if that's going to happen. But if you do get uh, sent sent out, I, I will be happy. But I do hope I get an invitation from whatever it is you end up to a nice tropical beach to come no, sit down. No, I'm not. I'm not inviting you anywhere. All right, All right. That, but you'll be, be gone, that. so that'll be good. Oh, I mean, that, for me personally, really. Like I think for a nation, it's a travesty. Hmm. But in my personal life, if you're gone, beautiful. You hear this? You hear this, folks? <laughs> this is the Boston bad boy talking to me right, right. here, supporting the the alleged president of the United States. In, in you thought he had a good heel turn? Yeah. That's what I just did to you. Whatever. <laughs> Run the ropes. It's time to run the ropes. It's when I educate this knucklehead Boston bad boy in the top stories in the world of professional wrestling. Let's go. All right. Sad news to report. A legend passes away. That's right, folks. Jose Lothario. Now, here's a guy who was the top wrestler in the Dallas area for many years, uh, especially in the 70s. And he trained Shawn Michaels. He trained Gino Hernandez. He trained, trained a bunch of guys in the wrestling business who went on to have tremendous careers. Uh, he just passed away wow. this past uh, Wednesday. So, you know, very terrible stuff here. We never want to hear about uh, any of our heroes passing away. And it's interesting because James Beard, you know, he, he had a great quote. You know, James Beard, mm-hmm. director of operations for the National Wrestling Alliance. Uh, he said, and I quote, I suspect if you polled the wrestling fans in the country, they'd say Mil Mascaris or, or Dos Caras or even El Santo was the greatest Hispanic wrestler of all time. In my book, they'd be wrong. To me, Jose Lothario was the best of them all. There you go. That's amazing. High praise. High praise. High praise. But it just, you know, when we hear about these things, it, it gives you pause. And it makes you um, appreciate life that much more because it's like, wow, you know, it could happen to anybody. Breaking news. Becky Lynch wants to break someone's arm. Oh, boy. Just start with yours. Well, you know, listen, Becky Lynch, she'd have to catch me first, first of all. (laughs) Okay. But she's threatened to break Ronda Rousey's arm. And the two of them are on a, on a collision course to uh, Survivor Series where they're going to wrestle each other. Now, you know how I feel about Rousey. I, yeah, you know, you I love her. No, yeah, you, you yeah, absolutely exactly. adore her. However, uh-huh. I don't think when it comes to bone breaking challenges, that's the kind of person you want to. You know what I mean? Like for better or worse, yeah. My money's on her for breaking somebody's bone well, quicker than a, a professional wrestler. Ronda Rousey <laughs> could beat every man on the roster. Never, she could beat up Brock Lesnar. Never mind Becky Lynch. Now, I mean, if we just get her break. to like cut a decent promo, I mean, would you stop? She could be a real wrestler. Someday. Would you stop? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Ronda Rousey successfully defended uh, the Raw Women's Championship at Evolution, which was a fantastic pay-per-view, by the way. Oh, please. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Yeah. She, she's doing uh, a good yeah. job. Let's move on from that. You don't want to go down that road right now with me. Speaking of Ronda Rousey, breaking news. It's a lot of breaking news tonight. Pro Wrestling Illustrated named Ronda Rousey the number one female wrestler in the world in the PWI Women's 100. They ranked the top 100 women in pro wrestling, and right. Rousey was at the top of the list. Listen, a, a broken clock is right twice a day. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. So, whatever. That should tell you something. Statistics could be off there. Whatever. Whatever. Mm-hmm. So, congratulations to Ronda Rousey. She continues to shock the world. Interesting happenings in Saudi Arabia. That's right, uh, Boston bad boy. The WWE had crown jewel. Oh, jeez. In Saudi Arabia, which, which was by far the worst pay per view to come oh, around. Oh no! Time. You said it was going to be great because Vince well, McMahon can do no wrong. Well, no, it's a good idea. Let's defend the blood money that the Saudis had. It's okay. They're cutting people's heads off. That's great. Well, the most controversial. You are a sycophant, my friend. It, stop it. The most controversial thing that happened is they had this tournament to crown the best wrestler, right? Okay. Best in the world. And in the finals, it was Dolph Ziggler. 
and The Miz. The Miz pretended to have an injury, so who replaces him? Shane McMahon. Lame. And in three minutes, he beat Dolph Ziggler and then took the trophy. He's the best wrestler in the world. Lame McMahon. Shane McMahon. Lame McMahon. He's the long line. He wasn't line, even in the tournament. Long in the line of lame McMahons. So it was a slap in the face to everybody. I, I don't really understand it, but um, the Saudis were happy. You know what it was? It was half-assed what it was. Okay. It was half-assed. Don't go too far. Yeah. It was half-assed. Don't go too far. And it was, uh, it was it, the whole thing was just stupid. Oh. Not only was it a stupid concept, it was poorly executed. Wow. Tell me how Kind of like this show, because of you. And the number one story in the world of professional wrestling is WWE Evolution Smash Success. Oh, boy. That's right, Boston Bad Don't Boy. talk to me about rate. I don't want to hear it. I predicted this. The all-women's pay-per-view was by far the best pay-per-view of the year. Yeah. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was a fantastic. Why don't you talk to Jazz about that? Well, I, well, Jazz doesn't give a damn about yeah, evolution. I mean, yeah. to, you know, Jazz beat up, um, it's funny that you mentioned that. Jazz beat up Jordan Grace to retain the NWA Women's Championship on the same day mm-hmm. and for uh, World Women's Revolution, which shout out to them. They're fans of the show. Hey, you got a fan. They're, and they're based out of Worcester, Massachusetts, by the way. Really? So I'm pretty the sure. City we'll be, of the Seven Hills. We'll be talking to the Paris some of, those of the folks 80s. Soon. Yeah, Worcester, shout Massachusetts. Out, <laughs> shout out to WWR there. But. Um, Jazz absolutely beat the hell out of Jordan mm. Grace. So it's funny, on the same day as uh, Evolution, Jazz was continuing to make a name for herself. She even took a guy by the name of Stokely Hathaway, who, you know, he, he's a character in wrestling on the indies and what have you. Yep. Uh, she snatched him up and said, you got my money, mother effer? And, and, and he took out his wallet and gave her money. She slammed yep. him up against the wall. Not playing around. No. That was a pimp move. Better stop messing with jazz. Okay, <laughs> stop is. messing with jazz. Damn it, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. She had not. She had no time. No, and, and let me tell you something. If jazz comes up to me and says, "Do you got my money, mother effer?" Mm. I don't even owe jazz money, and I'm giving her everything I got. Oh yeah, that's it. You want my hat too? Whatever, whatever you want. Just take it. Just don't hurt me. Jazz, if you could take his life, that would be great. Well, I that don't would know do, about that. Would that would do me a lot of good if you ever. You heard what I think. Now, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm a jerk? Maybe something in between? No. Head over to Facebook. Okay. Head over to Twitter. Type in Duke Loves Wrestling and let me know what's wrong with you. I'm sorry, what? Why do you want people to hurt me? What's wrong with you? Because it would bring me great pleasure. No, you're you're sick. You know what? You know what's going to bring me pleasure? I'm going to have our next guest straighten you out. He's going to tune you up. All right? Because up next, the Red Dog, Rodney Mack. Hi, this is Earl Oliver from Sully's Finish Wrestling. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com. This is Sean Reed, boxing writer and undercover low-key wrestling fan. And you're listening to Duke Love Wrestling. Woo! All right, welcome to the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, The Red Dog. I'm talking about Mr. Rodney Mack. How are you, Mack? Hey, man, what's going on, fellas? Man, I'm doing great. Great, man. Blessed to be here. Listen, Mac, I got to ask you, man, because this is something that I found interesting. In addition to beating people up all over the world, you and your wife, Jazz, actually have a um, a personal training business. Did I hear that correctly? Yes, yes, man. Um, it comes along with a first aid package, too. Uh, right after we beat you up, we fix you up. <laughs> no, man. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, Jazz and I have been doing this, man. Actually, um, about the, actually twenty years since we met. We we just uh, we we do now what's called personal training, but you know um, it, it's a little deeper than that. Uh, we we help uh, senior citizens, you know, just uh, regular people. Uh, we help athletes. We also like to focus and cater on kids, cater to kids, um, especially in obesity area and helping them you know tutoring them after school and whatnot so it's kind of a mixture of a big brothers and sister program and you know a bunch of things put together now what part of the country are you uh primarily focused on doing the personal training deal uh now we're in san antonio we just moved from uh lafayette louisiana Excellent. and uh now now we're in texas yeah san antonio back what how important is it to um have your your spouse, or in your case, your wife, doing these business deals with you, where you both are in the pro wrestling business together. You you have the personal training deal going on. How important is that partnership? Man, uh, 
Uh, it, it's 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 deep, man. It's 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 so important because uh, as as you guys know, and, and not just pro wrestling, but of course we're talking about pro wrestling. Just uh, in the entertainment business in general, it's hard to you know for size to stay together because one is always gone. And uh, in this case, we both happen to be blessed that uh, we're both doing what we love to do. It's not just a job for us. First of all, it's a passion. And uh, f- first and foremost, it's our passion. So, um, you know, and we made a career out of it, so that's, that's you know, extra. But, yeah, having her there with me and me with her, I mean, that's everything because now, you know, you have the, the business life, the personal life, the family life, all that you can still continue to, to have as, as you're on the road. That's great. Uh, you know, Duke is going to – he's going to fan out a little bit later on because you have a family history with wrestling. But I want to know – how, how what what made you get into it as far as you know to get to this point where you're able to do all these great things and and sort of giving back? Let's. I want to talk about your love of wrestling and how how you got into it. All right, man. Uh, I, my, my, I credit that to my father, man. My dad uh, since day one always watched wrestling with me. Uh, the mid south days, you know, and. Uh, Back in the the global days, and you know, even before that, in the time of the '70s, I remember going in where it was uh, the admission for a kid was like 25 cents. But uh, <laughs> yeah, my dad gets credited to most of that, man. And uh, I fell in love with wrestling from day one, and I, I love telling the story that uh, I'm four years older than my brother, and I remember one night uh, my mother was pregnant for my for, for my brother, and my father and I dropped her off at the hospital. And she was in labor. And he and I went over to watch a wrestling match uh, under the giant versus uh, it was a handicap match. Yeah, we left her there, and she had the baby. And <laughs> oh no! <laughs> went to the wrestling match. <laughs> now that's wrestling yeah, that's fandom right there. That's the that's one of the best wrestling yes, fan stories we've heard. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, you, you said you said something interesting there, Mac. You said uh, Mid South is is, is uh, one of the promotions that you grew up on, and I know one of their yeah. biggest stars was the Junkyard Dog. Tell us about your relationship right, right. with the JYD because, you know, he's credited as one of the people that helped train you. Right. Well, JYD is my is, is my uncle, and a lot of people, you know, think that's, that, you know, from the work, the business aspect. Well, it, it, it not, it's not by blood. JYD, as we all know, was in the Mid-South area. So uh, let's just say, long story short, he ended up uh, being with, one of my mom's sisters, and I had no idea. <laughs> this was way back in the day, right? So as time went on, I ended up playing. Uh, I was playing football at the University of Arkansas, Monticello at the time, and I had just finished practice and went over to a Walmart. And uh, as I as I was in the Walmart, uh, I saw Dad there doing an autograph session. So he called me over, of course, and wanted you know wanted to know what I'd be interested in wrestling. So we had a conversation and. I told him where I was from, and he got to chuckling. And uh, anyway, we he ended up telling me a little story, and uh, uh, he, he made a phone call back home, and I and and then I was instantly the nephew of the junkyard dog. Wow. And, uh, wow. Yes, yes, man. <laughs> what, what what are some of the lessons that you learned from the dog? Because I mean, you talk about a larger than life character. A, a lot of the the yeah. fans of this generation now they remember him from his WWF run, but Junkyard Dog was the man in the Mid South uh, territory for so many yes, years. Yes, and, and and yeah, you're right. Uh, what I learned from Dog uh, once again, I was I wrestled all my you know uh, growing up. I started wrestling like in the fifth grade, Greco Roman wrestling in, in, in school, and by the time you know then uh, I I wrestled all throughout uh, middle school and high school. And I was fortunate enough to be pretty good and wanted to stay at it. But by then, you know, and then I went on to play football, but I still continued wrestling throughout my football career. Anyway, Dad saw me to wrestle and I told him the story. And uh, he basically, he never spent much time at all in the ring with me. He basically taught me the business, you know, uh, it, 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 about making money in the business, the do's and don'ts, and uh, warned me about the political side of it. Being a black man in the in the in the business, and you know the the hurdles that I'd be facing, so to speak. What what are some of those hurdles that, that uh, he he talked about there? 
Well, man, just straight up, number one, you're black. No matter how bright you are, it's like when you open your mouth, Junior, they're going to know you're black. But, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, just being black, and it's a white man's world, you know. Uh, no matter how good you are or were or whatever, you are just going to be, you know, used as, as a, you know, to, 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 to whatever. And he, he told me that he was blessed that he had met a guy like Bill Watts who wasn't scared to take, you know, a chance on him and gave him that break. But uh, that he had been faced with that throughout as well, before and after. We're talking to the Red Dog, Rodney Mack, here on the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious, if you're following up on that, what, for you, when you finally got into the business, with that advice you got from the dog, what in particular did you face? I'm curious, you know, a, as you made your way through, did you think it got better? Did, in, in, the, in the span of your professional wrestling career, do you think it's gotten better for people of color uh, coming in and, and working oh. their way through? Oh, yes, most definitely, like now, as opposed to back then. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. I was so focused on making it. I can't really tell you, uh, like, specific deals or whatnot. I can go back and tell you how I thought I got messed with, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and I couldn't figure out why. Sure. But, uh, y- y- yeah, you know, at the time, I was so caught up in, 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 in being successful no matter what that, you know, I was looking at all the other hurdles in front of me and not realizing that was one of the main ones. Deep. That's you know, deep. I, and it, it's funny that, you know, there's been a lot of circulation around a particular name in professional wrestling and that of Hulk Hogan and his views and the things that he say, which said that, you know, I personally think is ab- abhorrent, uh, but apparently the company <laughs> doesn't. Um, you know, I, what do you think that that does, given that, that it's come so far? What do you think them bringing this guy back into the orbit of professional wrestling does? I mean, do you have, an, do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> it or? goes to show you. Right. It goes to show you my opinion that it didn't, it didn't go anywhere. Hmm. All they did was, you know, give him a, a tap on the wrist, so to speak, because they had to do something in the eye of the public, not just let it go on. You know, man, that shit ain't changed. It, 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 it never did, and in my opinion, it never will. If you get a... Uh, let's, you know, I'm going to be real with you, man. Anybody that does that uh, color, you know, in, 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 in any color that goes into wrestling, I'm, let's, let's talk about me. Now, I wasn't that color, but I'm still black. I ass kick or whatnot, you know, you go in there and, and do your thing, and, and, and guy like me get sidelined. Now, I know that we're better. I'm not going to say I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I know damn well that I was a lot better than a bunch of those guys that are still getting paid, you know, and, and, and I, I, I can't see why I don't have a job, or, or at the time didn't have a job. I was everybody's friend. Jazz and I were loved by everybody, you know what I mean? So it's, it's like we were the first ones there on the job, the last ones to leave. We were told by Stephanie McMahon in our face about two or three weeks before we got fired that she called us on the side and had a special little talk. And so it told us that we had jobs for life. Because Jazz was the most believable woman that they had on the roster. And and, and so was I. I was very believable. And uh, we were good people. And, you know, all that good shit. Uh, two weeks later, they fired us both. I find that pretty unbelievable as well, and we we talk a lot about this on on this show. This very this exact problem not not only people of color but women in in the business, and the fact that now more than ever the audience in professional wrestling is made up of people of color, and the fact that they're right. still they're, the fact that they're still resilient to allowing the talent to move through regardless of of what their color is, and the fact that they're still keeping right. dinosaurs like Hogan. In the orbit, which does nothing but discourage it, is absolutely mind-boggling right. to me. Right, exactly. And it's, it's funny that <laughs> and, you and, said, and, and you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but let's go back to the, to, to to people of, of of color. You know, every time you get one that can go, that's good. They they, they don't give them a chance to show who or who he or she is. They mm-hmm. stereotype. Exactly. If you don't have a pair of jeans on with a muff, you know, pants sagging down and one leg rolled up. You know, talking shit like he's from the streets and uneducated, then he'll be some motherfucker throwing pancakes, tripping tree boots in there. You know, all got his face painted up like some, you know, where I'm getting it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you're telling the truth right here, brother. It, it's funny, too, because recently on um, something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard, uh, with Comrade Thompson and Bruce Pritchard, Bruce pointed out the fact that um, he felt that 
had you come around at another time, you would be the top guy in the business, which I thought yeah. was – I thought that was a, a nice compliment, but at the same time, that was a tragic statement because what the right. hell does that mean? Right. You know what I mean? And you know what? I, I love Bruce Pritchard to death, and that, that makes me feel great that he says that, but at the same time, yeah, on the back burner, it's like, well, what, the, what, 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 what happened? Exactly. You know? And I, I want to go out and say this. I love all these guys. Like my brothers, because they are the ones I'm about to name: from Batista, Randy Orton, John Cena, uh, and all those guys. Because I could go on and on, but those guys that come from that era of OVW with me, you can go back and if they're real, <laughs> ask them, question them. Where was I at on that talent uh, one to ten level? I brought all those guys up. I'm not talking no crap, but. I worked with every last one of those guys and made them better. You sure did. You sure did. And it's funny, too, yeah. because even before that, tell us about that story in ECW where, in the parking lot because, you know, there's been some news circling around about Rodney Mack getting into a brawl in the parking lot outside of ECW's first pay-per-view. Oh, well, yeah, that's as real as it gets, man. I had been traveling with ECW all back and forth, Jazz and I, but for about a year and a half. Well, we had been on, you know, with them for a while, and then uh, we had got sent back home because I went off in the locker room and, and stood in the middle of the locker room in Viking Hall and, and, and challenged all them motherfuckers because they kept fucking with me. So I called them all out. And I stood in the middle of the room and, and turned my back and threw my head down and called out the whole fucking locker room. And then nobody jumped. But anyway, we went back home. And we stayed on for a couple of months, and they called Jazz. And Jazz, uh, Dreamer called Jazz about a pay-per-view. So Jazz went up there to the pay-per-view, and, just, you know, she was doing her thing. I was still in the independent zone. Jazz told me, Rodney, I think you should come up here. Let me fly you up here because I think it's a good time. I just want you here, whatever, whatever. So I did. I flew up there. And at the time, if you guys remember, that, that big pay-per-view, a big fight broke out because uh, I forgot if it was somebody to uh, – Independent League and uh, XPW, XPW out of yes, California. Yes, 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 yeah. Well, they did some shit in the in the main event, and, and and everybody ran outside, and we started fighting, and uh, we cleaned house. And I'm knocked out about five guys. Damn. And uh, when I get back in the locker, room, yeah, when I get back to the locker room, Paulie and I hugged and shook hands, and I remember crying because you know I'm, I'm I'm a very emotional person when it comes you know to, to anything. If it's funny, fuck, I laugh, you know. But uh, anyway, he and I had a moment, you know. From then on, then on out, I, I started working there, you know. And again, I had three or four matches, and I went from the curtain jerker to the mid card to working with New Jack in the in the uh, in the main event. Now, granted, the main guys had, you know, a few of the main guys had left, but still, I didn't, you know, if I, they wouldn't have held me back. I climbed the ladder pretty fast in ECW as well. You sure did. And then, you you know, you said that you, you made it to OVW. You were working with Batista and John Cena. In fact, when you got called up to the main roster, you originally appeared with John Cena, right? Uh, yeah, When I got called up, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, let me see. No, first I went. Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. You're right. You were like his bodyguard or, 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 or something right. like that. I went in right and took out B square. That's exactly. right. That's right. Now, what was this deal with the with the what do they call that? The white boy challenge or something like that? Where where when you got moved over to Raw, they would put you in there with the with a, a a white indie talent and you'd beat the hell out of them real quick. Right. Who put who put that together, man? I I think that was Vince McMahon's. From my understanding, that was Vince McMahon's idea. His baby. And he wanted some guy to come in and be that guy. Wow. So yeah. so even from yeah. the beginning there, they were playing up the whole uh, race angle there with, with having – because you were, you were put with Teddy Long, and one of the things that was always talked about was, you know, they're holding the black wrestlers back and what have you. They literally put yeah. that out front on their own TV, and they had you in that role as yeah, being right. disgruntled and talking that. Right. That's an interesting concept yeah. that the company is, is literally calling itself out on national TV. Right. That's crazy. I have no idea. Yeah. 
So, and it's like, I'm damned if I did, damned if I did. I mean, you know, I don't know. So what happened, know. Mac? Why Why do you think uh, WWE stopped calling you? Yeah, I, I, I promise you, bro, uh, I, wish, I wish I could give you an, an insight in any which way you will. I mean, I, I have no idea. Um, I, I get insight through some of the boys that they were scared of uh, the power that was actually coming along with the, the gimmick. You know, um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I have no idea. Now, did I hear once, this right that again, you – what's that? Once again, I had no issues, uh, or at least it didn't seem that we had any issues with anyone in the office or any of the boys. Well, well, here's the craziest thing that I, I found – and I'll shoot you the uh, link on YouTube. I'm not, I don't know how long it's been since you've seen this, but you actually uh, stepped foot in an MMA ring and you had a match where you beat the living daylights out of some guy in less than a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah. it was so quick. He remembers yeah, that. Yeah, All he right. Remembers he, that. I'm sure the other guy doesn't yeah. wants to forget it. So, so if anybody out there <laughs> thinks that it was a gimmick, all you got to do is watch this match where, where Rodney Mack is taking on this experienced MMA fighter, and he beat the mess out of this guy right. <laughs> in less than a minute. You know what I mean? What do you think? What do you think about this whole new idea of the crossover between the MMA and and professional wrestling? Uh, folks coming from specifically from MMA into professional wrestling. You think that works long term? Oh man, uh, yeah, it can. I mean, it has. You know. Uh... It just like any other sport, like football or whatnot. It, to me, it just depends on how well the guy does pick, picking the business up, you know. Because uh, you know, being from from mixed martial arts, going in, in my opinion, it should be fairly easy. Right. What do you think about Rousey and how she's doing as she's made the transition? I, yeah, I think she's doing man awesome job because they threw her in there, you know, pretty fast. Yeah, <laughs> and she's doing just yeah. She just went in and, and actually started having matches, matches, and in my opinion, she's doing great, man. Uh, you know, it, it's she funny. Because fast. She she did learn fast, and she was a little shaky on the promo to begin with. Uh, what's your take on that side of the wrestling business? How much do you enjoy the promo side, the theatrical side, that you have to bring that into the ring, along with the, the insane, imposing physicality you have? Right, I think, but that's what separates, you know, the pro wrestling from anybody else, from mm-hmm. any other physical sport as, as well. You know, sure, people can say what they want about our physicality. We know what it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is what it is. It is. They can say what they want to <laughs> be able to still be that physical, be in shape, still have be focused on, on, on being a character mm-hmm. that has when, – when you play into a character, it doesn't matter your, re- your, your wrestling set skills. If you if, if if you're a certain type of character, you should, my, in my opinion, you should portray to that character. And how much? You know, it doesn't matter. As you were developing your character, uh, how much influence did other people have on you as you were developing your gimmick and your characters? We've talked to a lot of guys who the consensus is it's got to come from inside. The best gimmicks come as a, as as a development of who you are deep down. So you know. As you're moving through the business, did you get a lot of insight from other people saying, "Well, you should do this," or, or tried to push you in the, in the wrong direction? No, no, I, I never, I, I never did it. it. It just came; it was like natural for me. Mm-hmm. It's like the dog gimmick. It's just a coincidence with Junkyard Dog. But I was born and raised on a pit bull farm. I, I was, yeah, I come from two generations of pit bull farmers. Wow. So I, when, when I was, yeah, when I was born, I literally had a hundred and somewhat dogs. On my property. Whoa! So I was born and raised in a pit bull cage, honestly. Hmm. So by the time I, I had got to meet JYD, I was already 18 years old. But I'm I'm serious. I I, I had to get. I used to get calls from a teacher. Well, not me, but the teachers used to call home when I was in the second and third grade because I had dog hair yeah, and just that. I, I'd be in the dog cage, man, before I catch the bus. <laughs> yeah, so and I that, had issues with that. <laughs> that gimmick writes itself, though. I think you know he was born in a in a dog cage, you know, this, this, <laughs> and, and now he's here to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, acting like a dog and doing you know the mannerisms and yep. all that, that kind of just you know came first. You learn from the best. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
So we've been able, like you said, I've been able to, to, to take that character and, and, and put wrestling moves and insert character here and, and you know, and have the psychology of it's, it. It's, uh, yeah, it, it can be a little complex. <laughs> We're talking to the Red Dog, Rodney Mack, here on Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. Mac, we, we, we touched upon it briefly, and, 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 you know, you're talking about character, physicality, putting it all together here. There's a guy right now who is pound for pound the, the number one MMA fighter in the world. I'm, I'm talking about uh, Daniel Cormier. He's currently the light heavyweight champion and the world heavyweight champion in UFC. And, and you know, now he's, he's considering dipping his toe in a pro wrestling a little bit. You actually have a history with Cormier that most folks don't even know about. Can you, can you talk to us about D.C.? Right, man. Uh, D.C. is from Lafayette, Louisiana, which so am I, and I, I, we, we attended the same high school. I was there first, of course, and then uh, D.C. Uh, played with my brother, who was like four years younger than I am, but he was on the same football team and wrestled, uh, yes, for Northside High School. So, um, yeah, D.C. is a Viking, man. That's what's up. So does that make us believe that you think if the, if a fight setup happens, which it looks like it's going to happen between him and Brock Lesnar, you you think he's got it? You think DC's got it? Oh man, hands down. Yeah, <laughs> I love Brock. I love I love them both, but I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, the hometown he's team. Yeah, yeah. Let alone <laughs> I had to go with him anyway. He's a Viking, you know, Viking for life. <laughs> but right. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, this dude's a freak, man, and everybody knows that. That's why. Do you think DC would do well in pro wrestling? Yeah, DC is doing it. Yes, yes, he will. He's been a big fan of pro wrestling all his life as well, and uh, I'm sure this, this guy is he, smart as a whip. So I think he'd do great. Wow. Now we're, we're going to hit you with some uh, rapid fire questions here. I'm, I'm going to mention a name to you, uh, Rodney Mack, and, and just let us know the first couple things that comes to mind when you hear the name. <laughs> you don't have to censor yourself. Let it all hang out, like you just said. And, and, and you know what? If you want to, if you want to throw in a quick story, if 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 something inspires you, feel free. All right, we'll modify right. a little bit for you. Uh, wrestling journeyman Dusty Wolf. Oh, great guy! Encyclopedia. In fact, didn't didn't you have one of your first matches with Dusty? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I should have threw in that's the nose kid. Yeah. One of, straight out of college, man. I was all fired up. Crazy and shit. I had a match with Dustin. I saw him just at me in the corner. I really didn't know him at the time. And so I went up to him and he was just like, Yeah, man, you shine and uh, you know, we'll call it out there. But you just start by the slamming me and uh, we'll call it and then we'll go from there. And so I then the bell rang and I hooked and puffed and ran my ass over there and commenced the body slamming him. And after about the sixth body slam, 30 seconds into the match, and then I was done, bro. I wanted to fucking, yeah, I was, he laughed his ass off, but I was blowed up. Yeah. Dusty. Yeah, man. The California stud Rod Price. Oh, my God. He's enough. Oh, man, that's, that's, the, that's my godfather pro wrestling, man. I learned it. I learned just about everything from Rod Price. The Rock. Oh, greatest entertainer man in the business of all time. Vince McMahon. A fucking prick. <laughs> I heartily agree. Wow. <laughs> Paul Heyman. Uh, genius, man. Uh, loving the death. Uh, Jazz. Oh, man. The love of my life and pound for pound, the baddest bitch around. <laughs> Rodney Mack. Well, damn, I should have saved that line. Red Dog, Rodney Mack, pound for pound, the baddest fucking dog around. <laughs> now, Mike, what's this I hear about you guys uh, looking for mixed match mixed matches around the, the, the nation here? Because I know a lot of uh, bookers and, and, and folks, they listen to the show. Uh, I hear that you and Jazz are challenging any mixed match couple in the world. Yeah, man, I mean, uh, once again, I don't think I'm the best thing since sliced bread, neither one of us, I mean, but it is what it is. I mean, we're, we're confident in, 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 in who we are, but let's face it, for the last 20 years, it's been Red Dog and Jazz, Rodney Mack and Jazz. I mean, we kind of molded this shit for all of them, and I mean, we can't get a book. What's, what's up? You bitches out there scared or something? Y'all motherfuckers don't want none? 
we started this shit. Now all of a sudden, y'all calling everybody. Y'all making all around us. You want some? Come get some. But if not, y'all say it. Let us know. Y'all put it out there. Like we scared of you, some bitch. We don't want none. Cause I'm tired of hunting for you, motherfucker. Damn. Wow. Look us up. What's up? In fact, how can how can folks get in touch with you if they want to book you and Jazz for that mixed match there? What's the best way they can reach you? Right. Matter of fact, get with me, man. I just got on Twitter. Rodney underscore Mac. That's right. And you can email me at book at Rodney Mac at gmail dot com. Wow. Holla at us, man. <laughs> but we can buzz that ass. See, I'm now I'm afraid. I'm ne- I would never challenge him to a fight, but I'm afraid just sitting here. Let me tell you something, man. I can remember seeing Rodney Mac uh, here in Boston, especially when he first started off with the WWE, and it was something for for kids of color to see a black wrestler that we could relate to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because everything about Mac is real, and it's like you know what? I like the entertainment. I like this, but that dude is real. He he might really hurt somebody. <laughs> I want to be that person. I want to command that respect, you know? I really appreciate you saying that because what you're saying is the truth. I, I, maybe that's why a lot of them don't fuck with I may be born or something or whatever, but with one thing you can say about me is I'm real, and I'm going to keep it real, you know? So uh, I'm not trying to sound the greatest thing out there right now, but what you see is what you get, and I'm, and I'm going to bring it to you, 150. And, and, and there's, if there's two people in the stands or 300. Cause I love what I do, you know. So that's that's just the way it is, man. And, and if I made it, anybody out there can make it. And that's the message I want to shout out. I'm from a little old town without a motherfucking red light in it, and I had a dream. And all I got, all you got to do is put your nose to the ground, get that shit in your blood, baby, <laughs> and then hunt, hunt until you find that motherfucker. And when you find it, nail it. That's unbelievable. I gotta ask you one more thing before we let you go. You're one of the few people I've ever talked to who's actually ever been in a video game. Do you ever get the family together and make them play the video game? You know, and, and they have to like, do the kids have to pick you and, and you get mad if they don't? Like, how does that work? Man, I'm a, I'll be honest with you, Jazz, and I have not even seen it. <laughs> oh man, that's well, real. We haven't even seen. I, I, I actually just what I look like on the video. Yeah, I just Googled you, uh, and, and there's a side by side of the real you with the, uh, the the the. They did a pretty good job, but uh, you know they got the tattoos right. It looks like so. You, you, you might just get. You, I would say get it, and you know make you know, the kids will think you're cool. <laughs> I might have to change that out. You right, man. <laughs> Rodney Mac. Thank you for joining us today, brother. Man, thank you guys for having me, and uh, God bless you, man, and uh, y'all all the fans out there, thanks for, for supporting Jazz and I for, for so long throughout the years, and like I said, hit me up on Twitter, and, 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 and email me, and message me, man, y'all fuckers, we coming down, and we're going to tear the house down like we always have. Hey, this is Daniel Richards, the progressive liberal. I want you to remember to vote Democrat, turn this country around, continue listening to one of the best out there, the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. That was a hell of an interview. Boy. I have to say. Yeah. That was, damn. Uh, Genuine. It's not often that, you know, our, a lot of people aren't used to doing interviews. It's hard to get a genuine interview. Sure. I mean, you look at even, you know, uh, you know, Tonight Show interviews. A lot of the celebrities are not Yeah, they're very nervous. Well, but it's hard to yeah. get some. And that was, uh, he really came, like the genuine the genuine guy came through there. And then, he, and then he cut a promo on us at the end. He did cut, cut a promo. So yeah. that's a professional. Absolutely. 100% and, professional. And, you know, it's a package deal. So wherever Red Dog is, you're going to have jazz. So you better so. be on your best... F and behavior. Yeah, because they're, they're ready to beat up everybody. Yeah. They'll they, train you too, though. They'll train the old people, they'll train the kids. Yeah. And then they'll beat the hell out of you right. all, all in the same deal. They may train you so that they yeah. can come back and beat the hell out of That's you. That's what it is. Train you up <laughs> so then they can hurt you afterwards, which would be pretty interesting. Yeah, I'd pay to see that. A uh, couple of shout outs there, Boston Bad Boy. Oh. First of all, uh, happy birthday to old man Wade. Oh. It's his birthday this he's week. Even older man Wade. Yep, even older man Wade. Uh, Paulina Mephisto, remember mm-hmm, her, the mm-hmm, Russian mm-hmm. Uh, champion there? Mm-hmm. Her birthday just passed. All right. Pretty cool. Yeah. You know, so we got a couple of birthdays there. All and around the globe. In fact, Prince Charlie, he just had a baby. Really? Prince Charlie, he and his wife uh, just had uh, Camila Rose. Oh. 
Oh, see that? the Princess Charlie. Yes, exactly. We'll call it Princess Charlie. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So we're going to train her up, mm-hmm. and then when she is able to yep. start taking bumps, I'm going to bring her in here to beat the hell out of you. Okay. All right. You do that. We'll, we'll do that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, Boston oh. Bad Boy, I got to tell you, um, and, and it's funny because Rodney Mack was talking about racism and wrestling and, and yeah. things of that nature. And, and it, <laughs> Which is still something I find so amazing that it's acceptable. Sure. Like, it's acceptable to bring back Hulk Hogan. It's acceptable. Why is it acceptable? Well, you know, it's funny because Gail Kim, who's a former WWE Mm -hmm. champion, women's champion, and she was in TNA for years and she was champion there, whatever. She's a legend, right? Somebody tweeted her about Hogan and asked her, you know, can you believe they brought him back for this thing and what have you? And she said, well, what do you expect? They're racist over there. And then she clarified and said, I don't mean they as in everybody in the company. I'm talking about from the top up. And from her personal experiences, she says that she never experienced racism until she was there. Wow. And it was extreme, including slurs that we won't mention on the air. But, you know, for Asian people, the G word. Wow. I mean, the first time she heard that was I always say wow. But then why am I surprised? Well, I mean. Look at what that bu- look at what the business is, and look at how they've been resistant to change in every other department. Mm. So why, of course, they use that language? It's locker room talk. Well, we've always said it. No one had a problem with it before. You know, no one had a problem. We used to call people colored before. Mm. Well, no one had a problem with it. What's what's everyone getting so offended for? It's like, oh, people were offended, but they had to sit at the back of the bus, so you didn't really hear about it. You <laughs> like like it's a new it, new occurrence. Well, it's like now. the dominoes have to fall for change to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and change is happening. Um, but w- it's almost as like, could they bring back, could they, it's almost close enough that they could make Hulk Hogan's gimmick that he's a racist. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and spin that one. It's and, been done. Right. But even, but it can't be done anymore. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. And hang on, I need to. I need to. I have, have you tried the Tic Tac gum, by the way? I have. I have. I the the like problem the with I like the Tic Tac gum, and as you can hear, I have the Tic Tac gum here. But the problem is, like, you got to take a couple pieces, mm. and no matter how many pieces of the Tic Tac gum you get, it's only ever like the equivalent to half a stick of gum. Hmm. You're going through a lot of Tic Tac gum. Yeah, well, your so, breath has been smelling pretty well, bad. Well, Tic Tac, so Tic Tac, you better get your act together with giving me more gum. For my Tic Tac. Well, you know what? We're going to tag Tic Tac in that, and we'll let them know. But it's it's here's my issue though. When do we get to a point where people evolve and get past this? Is it possible that Vince McMahon is better now? No. Okay. Because you look at you, a lot of this race racism. We're talking about racism being the system. Mm. Let's talk about bigotry. So the system is racist because it's set up against people of color. And, and a million ass in business, the prison system, the laws that are on the books. Only now it's being examined. What leads to the racism is the bigotry. I think Vince McMahon has the same disrespect for black people that he has for women, that he has for... That's all coming from the same place. Whatever his issue is, to run a company like that is absolutely insane. And to, to, to welcome back a guy like Hogan, what example is that setting, a, not only for the audience, but for the other people who work for you? Mm. You're talking out of both sides of your mouth. We're an inclusive company. This is a big thing, big money, we're women. But let's bring back this guy. Let's drag a dinosaur. Let's drag a corpse out to do a promo and waste everybody's goddamn time. For what? I think I know for what. I think Hogan's got the dirt on him. Ooh. Hogan's got the dirt on the whole operation. And 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 things that we don't even know about. And Hogan says, I want to still, because he's just, you know, I still want to be involved. And they had to say yes, because mm-hmm. as bad as the racism is, what else does he know? He's in that organization organization a long time. I'm sure he knows where a lot of bo- bodies are buried. I can't think of any other reason why I'd keep a guy like that around. Well, it's, it's interesting, too, because the first place that you bring him back is Saudi Arabia. Huh. And we know that their human rights record is, is stellar. Sure. 
Sure. And they cut a guy's head off and put him in a vat of acid. Yeah. An American citizen. Yeah. Yeah. Weeks before this happens, they cut an American citizen's head off because he's a, a journalist tr- investigating the incredibly corrupt Saudi government. You know what? It feels so good to be a goddamn American, and I can say that the Saudi government is corrupt from top to bottom. I don't get my head cut off because I'm sitting in America. Some people don't have that luxury. But our job as Americans is to defend that luxury, that human right to not be oppressed. But this guy gets his head cut off. And what does the WWE do? Let's put on our circus anyway. Hmm. Let's put on our inclusive circus. We have women. Oh, but women can't. Oh, but women can't. Can women? No, women can't. Oh, yeah. Women can't go. People's heads are getting cut off. But we need to make a fucking dollar because I'm Vince McMahon. And I got to bring back the corpse of Hulk Hogan because if I don't, he's got something on me. What would it take if Hogan said, and this is hypothetical, they rebuke Hogan and Hogan goes to the media and says, I get it on tape, Vince McMahon saying the N-word. Ooh. Ooh. I get it on tape, or just him just not even saying he has the proof. I get it X, Y, and Z. Vince is the head of a huge uh, public company. That's not good business. Yeah, it's true. It's true. That's my personal theory. Yeah, I, that's, a, that's a hell of a theory, and, and I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, what I do know is in 2018, you're doing business with a nation that is extremely oppressive, especially to women. And you bring back a guy who has made it clear what his ideology is around people of color and black people in particular and, and his disdain. This goes along with this whole nationalist movement that's going on. Sure. That endorsed by the president of the United States, by yeah, the way. Who is... A WWE Hall of Famer. And well, a isn't that funny? Investor. Yeah. So if if he's buddy buddy with Vince, mm. they must get along. If if I was a white nationalist, mm. you and I, I don't would not we've... be. We, we don't. <laughs> it put just the, wouldn't work. Well, we don't put that aside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And go on and have a cup of coffee. No. That's sort of a thing that you either agree on mm. or you disagree on. Mm. And when you're doing business, like you know, I wouldn't do business with somebody like that. No. No. So it must, it says something. There's got to be a line somewhere. But it says something that those two get along like they're two peas in a pod. Mm. Vince McMahon and Donald Trump. And I think Vince thinks it's also funny. It's an F you to all you liberal snowflakes. To the PC crowd. Everything's too P, because he comes from that generation. Mm. And it's insane. It's absolutely insane. I have a friend who's a big wrestling fan. Uh, bigger than you, I bet. Certainly bigger than me because I hate wrestling. Stop. Spe- spe- uh, specifically for things like this because it's such a donkey show the way they run this. Canceled his WWE subscription in protest. A lot of people did. A lot for of the Saudi did. Arabia thing. A lot of people did. And rightly yeah. so. Yeah. Because yeah. it's disgusting. So I want you right now to declare that you're going to sell your shares of WWE stock on this show right now in solidarity with freedom. Truth, justice, and the American way. Well, folks, we're out of time. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tony's not here yet. Listen, I want you to sell the shares in the company. I want you to tear up the contract. I want you to get out of my life while no, you're at it. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You can make change from the outside and from the inside. Well, you better start making some change. I'm, listen. And start by selling those worthless shares that you have anyway. They're, they're worth a lot of money. Well, take your money. Take Vince's money and go. And go, you know, and I want you to donate that money. Furthermore, to human rights campaigns. Get the hell out of here. We'll, we'll put up a poll, though, folks. What do you think? Is it time for all of us to cancel our WWE Network subscriptions and stop doing business with the WWE, or do you not care? Yeah. Are you subhuman? You don't care. You just want your entertainment. You want to sit on your fat ass and eat your popcorn and stuff your face with the corn syrup and watch uh, watch wrestling, where people who are working have to work under conditions that are abhorrent. Women are disrespected. People of color, disrespected. That Imagine you go to work, right? You go to work one day, and your boss says, oh, you know what? David Duke used to work here. Yeah. He's coming in to give, He's a, back. He's coming to give <laughs> a pep talk to the, to the sales meeting. Hmm. <laughs> so that's what, that's what the people you say you're fans of 
are dealing with in this company. And the only language Vince McMahon understands is money. So the only way you're going to make a change is with money. Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? It's a fair question. Let's call it that. Let's host an event called Put the Money Where Your Mouth Is pay-per-view. Hmm. And it's just the fans and me in the middle calling them all out one by one. I'll do that. There's a pay-per-view for the ages. Vince McMahon, I, I don't sanction anything the Boston Bad Boy says right now. Uh, please don't hurt me. Jeez, you're such a company man. It's well, disgusting. You know, I, I, he's my friend. Sell the stock. <laughs> Mr. Tony Schiavone, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling.